Okay, hello everyone. Can you hear me? Excellent. Hi, Gabby. Bridget, Punam, Ronel. Nice to see everyone. Good. So we are in on part one of Are You the One? Are You the One? The axioms you must recall. This is going to be a different uh, kind of a webinar. Uh, if you are new, find the chat and tell me hello in the chat. Um, it's definitely going to be different. It's going to be challenging. Um, and you like the picture. Here we go. Here we go. So first of all, first of all, agreements. Nothing I say is true unless, of course, it is true for you. Hi, Shamaya. So that's the first agreement. Nothing I say today is true unless, of course, it is true for you. Hi, Carmela. This webinar is not for the faint hearted. It is designed for the brave. While nothing I teach you is new, you already know it. What you consider is you is not you. When you ask a person who is you, they will have a problem to give you an answer. If they have not been with the, us for a while, you ask a person who is you, they will have a problem to give you a definition. They don't really know who is you. They think it's the body, they thought, their brain, something that belonged to them. So while nothing I teach you, the spirit is new, you already know, know it, yes? This is you, the spirit. What you consider is you is not actually you. As a result, as a result for, of this uh, synthetic you, what I teach is not only new, but true. Are you with me? So as a result for this synthetic uh, you, it's not you, but for this synthetic you, what I teach you is not only new, but true. And truth remove lies, which is the synthetic you, the lies, the synthetic you, and uncover you, the one that knows. Does it make sense to you or do you need a demonstration? Who, who can explain to me what does it mean actually? What, what do I actually say? Okay, is it back? Can you hear me now? Excellent, so let me repeat. So we've got the, you've got the, the, your body, okay? You've got your mind, you've got the brain, but all of these things you own. You, the spirit is not a something, you own things. So far everyone with me? Now the definition of the word spirit is this thing that knows. So while I teach, while nothing I teach you is new, so for you, nothing is new. For you, nothing is new. You already know it. What you consider is you is not you. So what you consider is you, you most people consider that they are either their mind or their brain or their body or a composite, but they don't know that they are the spirit. So far, so good. Does it make sense to you? Again, especially if you knew, if it doesn't make sense to you, ask me. Otherwise, you will not really understand and you'll think that I'm talking bullshit and it will not actually help you. Okay? Makes sense so far. Okay. As a result of that, because you don't know who is you, as a result of that, for this synthetic you, for, for this thing, for this combined thing, what I teach you is not only new but true. What I teach you you will see that this synthetic you is still under the command of you. So what I teach you now, you will know that it's true and it will become true for the synthetic you, okay? And what will happen is the more I will tell you truth, the more lies will go away. So truth remove lies, truth remove lies. Now why truth remove lies? Because truth is something that happened at zero time. It is the exact time, the exact place, the exact form, and the, and the exact event. So anything that changed from that zero time, it's not the truth anymore, it's a lie. 
Does it make sense to you or not? Which means if something happened here, and since time is goes by, what you look at when I'm looking at, at it from this time, when I'm looking back, I look at the lights, not true. So if I find the truth about something, it will stop to exist. Finding the truth about something will cause it to stop to exist. It is the most magical thing in the universe. I can give you an example. For example, you have a, an argument with someone and you talk and you talk and you talk and you talk and you find the truth about it and the problem disappeared. Or if you had an amazing idea, you cannot remember it because it was truth. So for something to continue, it has to contain a lie, a change, a lie. The word lie means a change from the original. Everyone with me so far? Very good. Okay. Now, now, while what I'm going to tell you may be overwhelming, you need to hear it as we are almost out of time. This universe is in a big, big, big problem. Most people don't actually aware of it, um, but we're almost out of time. As you will progress, you will learn more about it. In this uh, split moment of time, you can reverse the dwindling path of this universe. Each one of you has the power to reverse it. Each one of you has the power to do your part of what needs to be done. Your willingness to confront the lies, to participate, and most importantly, to validate any minute improvement will define your tomorrows and the tomorrows of every being on earth. Your willingness to confront the lies, and I'm going to show you quite a few, to participate, not to just sit there and be afraid or unwilling to say, I don't know, or I don't understand, but being actually brave and communicating, and most importantly, to validate any minute improvement will define your tomorrows. And why? Because success is the sum of all validated improvements. Are you ready to start? Ready. Excellent. Yes, yes, yes. Excellent. Okay. Ready. Here we go. Life for most people is a series of endless stress, struggle, disappointments, pain, and a constant internal chatter that at the end always leads to the conclusion of, I'm a failure. You wanted more, mm, it didn't happen. You'd always think that it is not, mm, it's not, I don't have the best girlfriend. Uh, I'm, I don't have the best success. I don't have the best business. I'm a failure. It may be because the one you truly love rejected you, or the debt is overwhelming, or your parents are destructive, or your kids are on drugs, not doing well, or just may not, or just may not do well, or it can be relationship disasters. Whatever it is, and there's always something. Your secret conclusion is, I'm a failure. Is that making sense to you? Do you see that? Not, not for you, but I'm talking for people in Australia, yes? People here are, of course, yes. And, and as if this, is, if, as, uh, if this was not enough, the war of the worlds is in full swing and most people are not even aware of it and when they have any kind of inkling they actually parrot implanted commands and the, your fixed conclusion is i'm a failure i speak to people and they tell me yes yes there is a war of the worlds and i say which words and they don't even know or they say something and I say, where is that word? And they don't know, but they just saying, they're just parroting thing. 
It seems the game is uh, rigged for you to fail. Did you ever felt that the game is basically built in such a way that you cannot win? Did you notice that most people fail most of the time? Something is wrong, yes? And even if you succeed in one area, there are some other areas that are so bad that they destroy all the rest of your success. So the bad news is, you're right, the game is rigged. Actually, everything is set up for you to fail. Any success you see is in the realms of miracles. When you see people succeeding, it's really, really in the area of miracles really, really in the area of miracles, because they can succeed in one area, but other areas will mess them up so much that every success that they did have in one area for them is not as important. Are you with me? Yeah. This is why most of the people fail most of the time. But there is very, very, very good news. It's very good news in all this mess. Any idea what is the good news? It is a war between words, Harold. Something can be done about it. We can do something about it, okay? That you are here, yes, mm-hmm, okay. War of the worlds between universes. We have you, yes, thank you. Yes, Jenna. The good is winning. I wish it was true. We can do something powerful for ourselves and each, uh, and each other, yes. That's very good. The good news is very, very interesting. Change of our, our point of view. You are a perfection that never changed the more Okay, good, very good. We're here and removing lies. That's very true. Yes. We are, the good news is we are we're here now. Yes. So here is the good news. The very good news is, the very good news is, the real intention and truth occur after a period of time, like from the beginning. Okay, good. The good news is, the good news is, the good news is, Yes, the game is rigged, but it is rigged by you. Yes, the game is rigged, but it is rigged by you. And since you rigged it, you can unrig it. It is you that decided that you take a totally all-knowing being, reduce it to not know. So then you need to sense to know. And then uh, once you, this is uh, not working because you tr you're trying to create a game for yourself. You're trying to, all-knowing is the worst thing that can happen to a person because it's all boring. So in order to, uh, have a game, what you do, you're reducing your level of knowingness and you say, actually, I don't know. And then in order to know, I need to sense. So you start using senses. And when that uh, is not enough, you're still uh, uh, getting uh, um, in too much information, then you use feelings. And when that is not enough, then you use effort. And at the end, what you get to is thinking. Are you with me? You deteriorate, you deteriorate in your possession, in your effect on the universe, on the effect of things around you. You just deteriorate from totally knowing, I, I just know what's right and it works. And then you say, well, maybe I'm not as a professional. Maybe people know better than me, so I don't know. You invent reason why you don't know. And then you need to feel it. Yes, you need senses. You use senses, so you need to feel it. And then you use effort. 
And when effort is not working, you start to think. And thinking is just a substitute for creation. For as long as you think, you don't create. And every single person is somewhere on this scale. And unfortunately, the majority of society is here. They think a lot. There's a sense of freedom in knowing that everything is your fault, the good and the bad. Yes, you are right. It's only that it's not your fault. It's your responsibility. So this is the good news, the good news. The first trait of the one, the first trait of the one, the first trait of the one is he knows he rigged the game. Are you with me? Yes, Oshri, very true. The first trait of the one, he knows he rigged the game. The difference between the one and the, the no one is that the one know he rigged the game and the, uh, the no one find someone to blame. Every time you blame, every time you think that something is not all right, every time you find something wrong, you basically say, I'm an effect and the other side is cause. If someone piss you off, he is cause and you are pissing. Are you with me? His cause and you're in effect. <laughs> Tonya, me too. <laughs> Are you with me? So if something happened to you, and even if you have the most amazing proof that someone did something to you, you're still in effect. You're still not the one. You're not the spirit because the spirit, the spirit, the spirit is the thing that brings something out of nothing. Something out of nothing. This is like unbelievable. Something out of nothing. This is the spirit. For the past hundred million years, you have been engaged in a deep undercover mission. Yes, for the past hundred million years, you have been engaged in a deep undercover mission. The mission to cover you and you almost succeed. Hundred million years is a very long time. Yes, how come you kept on such a destructive mission for so long? How come? You did not find the way out. How come you are the most powerful thing in the universe? You, you are really, you are pr practically, you God. You are not the God, but you are God. You can bring something out of nothing. You simply know. How come, for all of these things, you didn't find the way out? You forgot. Yes, why? Why did you lose control? Because I rigged the game. So I can't get out. Why? Because you are in invested in the physical universe. So what does it mean? Then uh, instead playing, you, you started playing the small game. Okay. Why? Why something so powerful will get stuck for so long in, a in something that's not good for him? being convinced because uh, you wanted the game that's true you think that it that you should pay for your sins okay yeah we wanted the game yes sins i don't know still trying to figure it out okay get convinced we are physical yes better not to know than to know okay actually it's much better to know we want to be right yes someone convinced us uh, to join this game yes it means uh, that you hold on to something not to lose secretly of scarcity of viewpoints and uh, want to protect bodies, okay? Because if not, it would uh, be too easy, okay? Because if not, it would be too easy for the spirit, yes. 
uh, to experience the, and, demonstra and demonstrate we can do it. Okay. You are very smart. And uh, you set up a real game for yourself. A game you almost cannot win. A game you always almost cannot win. You, what you've done, you've set up for yourself a game that you almost cannot win. Any idea what, the, what the, that game is? You've set up a game that is so good that you almost cannot win. Why is it? Imagine that you play that this is you, okay? And this is a, a five years old. And you're playing basketball, okay? So this is not interesting, yes? So what you're going to do at the beginning, you will tie your hands behind your back and then you will tie your legs, and then you will agree that you will uh, uh, allow to use only the head, and then you will say, no, not even the head, I'm allowed to use only the chest, the chest, and you will put on yourself more and more and more and more restriction, all the while knowing that you can easily win, until one point you uh, set up on yourself so many restrictions that are not real, that now you believe that you cannot win. Do you understand what's happening? You reduce your power and reduce your power and reduce your power. And the question is, what was that game? What, what, what the game did you play? What was it? What is this game that you cannot win? Because if you know what is the game, you'll be able to undo the game. You understand? If you know that you just try to play basketball, okay, fine, we can do something about it. Uh, let's open the, the hands behind the back. Let's, let's remove the, the barriers. So what is that game? What is the game that you think everyone is playing? To be safe and not take risk, to avoid losses and not create. Why? Hide and seek, okay. What is it that we are all playing? Life, yes. To know, a game of robots, yes. Did you notice that everyone, 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 all the time trying to find what is wrong? Did you notice that all the time you're always operating on correcting something, even if you're standing in order to stand, you correct left, right, left, right, left, right. You're always balancing. Yes? So what is the game? The game is you have been looking for the enemy all the while the enemy was you. You were looking for an enemy, but the enemy was you. You set up the trap. It was you that set up the trap. So you're looking for someone to blame. And the manifestation is today, you just do whatever you do, you're looking for someone to blame. You always continuously in 24 hours a day, looking for someone or something to blame. Because you know there is an enemy and the enemy is you. Because you set it up. And you're not really an enemy, but you're looking for an enemy. You're looking for who tie my hand behind my back. It's me. Who is preventing me from knowing? It's me. Who make me drink? It's me. Are you with me? So you've been looking for an enemy, but the enemy is you. If you look at anything that happened to you in life, anything that's going on with you in life, if you will actually look, you'll see that the only problem is that you blame someone because the moment that you stop blaming someone or the moment that you stop assigning causation to someone other than you, things will improve. An emergency is a moment of heightened willingness to know that it's you. Are you with me? A 
an emergency is a moment of a heightened willingness to acknowledge that it's you. And so you'll be able to do anything while there is an emergency. As you will see that uh, I actually put the enemy in uh, uh, quotes because you are really not the enemy. You're just playing the game. You're just playing a game. You, you just forgot that it's you. You're not really an enemy. It was, the purpose was just a game. That's why you can handle anything immediately the moment that you realize that it's you. The moment that you have no one else to... What does it mean, necessity level? Necessity level means, okay, fine, there's no one else to blame, so I will make it go right. There is no other enemy to find. Okay, fine, so it's me, fine, let me fix it. There's no one to play with. Okay, fine. Are you with me? This is really the whole secret. Most being on earth made it they are deep under the cover. They stop looking. They are pushed between waiting for something that will never come in unconsciousness. Most of the people waiting for something that will never come or unconsciousness, they cannot recognize truth. They will work instead of actually doing something for themselves that will save them. They will uh, put an effort on something instead of learning how to put something out of nothing. They will destroy the relationship instead of creating it. Are you with me? So most people on earth are moving between unconsciousness, total effect, to waiting. If you have debt, you're waiting. If your business is not doing well, you're waiting. If your relationship is deteriorating, you are waiting or you are unconscious that it's been deteriorating for so long because if you would know, you would do something about it. And if you didn't do something about it, it means that regardless of your explanation and excuses, you've been waiting and wait is very, very, very low on the awareness scale. Very low. Waiting is below Chihuahua. It's almost there in, at unconsciousness. Are you with me? It's really low. You are here since you are different. While you are a step away from oblivion, you are not totally covered. You can still somehow recognize truth. If you are here, it is because at one point or another, you heard me saying something that somehow some to you, ah, you know what, there is something here, this is different. You still can recognize truth. You are not totally covered. That's why you are here. In the one seminar in Toronto, it will be in Canada between August 3rd to 9th, you'll discover the only one that could rig the game for the one, you will discover you. You think you know who you are, you don't. And so the second trait of the one, recognizing truth and invents new truths for others to follow. The second trait, you will see that the one, the person that is not under the spell of of his own uh, jail he can recognize truth which means he's clever clever that my definition of the word clever is the ability to recognize truth and my definition of the word genius is the uh, ability to invent new truths for other to follow most people most of the time just change nothing new today i will give you a taste of who you really are. It's just a test, it's just a touch. It will be your first step in the last, uh, in the past hundred million years on the road out of the condition of enemy. And I'm not just saying it, 
you'll see that regardless of how long you've been with us or with me, where, where you are right now, where you are right now on this path of making your own cage, your condition is enemy because you are your own enemy. Are you with me? You are your own enemy and you, this is the condition. You need to get out of being an enemy. What you do to yourself is what an enemy will do to you. Are you with me? You destroy the environment, you destroy your body, you destroy your feelings, you destroy, you, you cut your power, you are careful, you're finding continuously what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong. You're an enemy. So let's start. How will you define the word axiom? Let's start. We're starting to look at the axiom. This is just a, was just an a opening for you to know what we're going to talk about. But let's start and get to the meat. What is axiom? How will you define the word axiom? Basic truth. Truth has no basic. Truth has no continuation. So truth is something that is 100%. So there is no basic, medium, large. Axiom is fundamental truth. Truth has no continuation. So axiom cannot be truth. Are you with me? I know that most people define axiom as something to do with self-evident truth. This is what the dictionary says, self-evident truth. But truth has no continuation. Principle we operate from, yes, fundamental, yes, pattern uh, to get results, truth, it's definitely not truth. The rule of how the universe works, that's good, Shamaya. Assume truth, it, as we explained. Um, I don't know, a socially accepted belief, okay, the, blue, the blueprint of the universe, that's very good. Axiom is a basic principle that we can see uh, or, or for ourselves, how things work, yes. Axiom is a fundamental rule of the physical universe, good. Fundamental law of the universe, that's very good. Here we go. I defined axiom as the agreed upon basic building blocks of something. Those building blocks are described as the natural laws of something. So the natural laws of some things are the axiom, the basic building blocks of anything. So if uh, the physical uh, universe, uh, one of the basic building block is um, um, gravity, so there will be one of the axiom is there is such thing as called gravity because it's one of the building blocks. So far so good, everyone with me? We're going to talk about those building blocks, okay? The third trait of the one, he knows the axioms of the game he's playing. The one, the spirit, you, you know the axiom, you don't understand them, you didn't learn them, you are not uh, learning them, you just know them, like you know your name. And before it's there, before you just know the axiom of the game you are playing, you're not the one. So if I'm a guitar player and I'm the one, I'm the best, I just know the axiom of guitar playing. But if I'm just learning, it doesn't sound as good and it's not as successful and I don't, because I don't know the axioms of guitar playing. Maybe I know some of the rules, maybe I have some practice, but I don't know the axioms, the basic truth or the basic fundamentals, okay? Everyone with me? So we are looking at axioms now. What, what do you think limits your understanding of the axioms of life? Why is it so uh, problematic for people in uh, the physical universe to understand the axioms of life? They're never clearly defined. Okay. That's good. Why do you think, what do you think limits your understanding of the axiom of life? 
It is well hidden. Yes, Kiana. Lack of critical thinking skills. Good. I'm unwilling to make myself wrong. Yes. Fake realities are blinding us. That's true. Lots of uh, conflicting information. Yes, Gali. Consideration. Lorna, it's very good. We run on automatic much of the time. Yes. We don't just do things. We come up with the reason not to. Okay. We like complicated things. Okay. So this, the answer is really, 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 really simple. I'm going to give it to you. And once you will see the whole uh, mechanism, and I'm going to show you a short video that will help to explain it, you will see that what I say is true. So what do you think limits your understanding of the axiom of life? Symbols. Symbols is what limits your ability to actually understand. You'll see that symbols are always a substitute for knowingness and are the limiting factors in human understanding. Because when I say, when I give you a symbols and I say, I love you, what I say here is a, not a direct communication, it's a via. So you don't actually duplicate what I said. So for as long as there is a distance between two things, for as long as there is no total duplication, for as long as this is not a total duplication, what happens is there is a difference. So the duplication is not 100%, the communication is not 100%, and the understanding will not be 100%. Are you with me? Everyone with me? Everyone understand? So because we are using symbols, and when I say a word, when I say chakachuka, you don't really fully understand it. First of all, it was always new for you at some point. And second, you have a, a, all kinds of things connected to this word, and what you define as this word, and what actually this word or symbol mean is two different things. Before you restore your willingness to know, you will only deal with levels of misunderstandings. For as long as you rely on symbols, you will only deal with level of misunderstandings. So everything that happens, if you don't simply know, if you don't learn how to know, you actually deal with levels of misunderstandings. Now, to demonstrate the limiting nature of symbols, let's look at the following video. I want you to look at this video. It's a short video. It will give you the idea of how limiting these symbols are. Here we go. To Flatland, a world of only two dimensions. Only forwards and backwards, left and right. In this world, there is no up and no down. I said to Ray, where's Dotty? He said, well, she's out in line. And... <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> What the bleep is that thing? Huh? In this world, the two-dimensional beings that live here have no concept of three-dimensional objects. These two-dimensional flatlanders have no understanding of cubes, spheres, tetrahedrons, or yours truly. From their 2D perspective, my 3D finger looks something like this. <gasps> what the flatter is that? Run! Hello, little circle. 
Ah, fear of the unknown. Or should I say, not yet known. It's a puzzle. If we see only what we know, how does anyone ever see anything new? The unknown. How do we ever get out of our box? Hello, little circle. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Who said that? Where are you? This is always the tricky part to explain. I am in another dimension, another space. I am above you. What word? The A word. Above? Ah! It's forbidden. <laughs> well, what do you think it means? I don't know. And I don't want to know. You can be severely punished if you use that word. <gasps> Are you a ghost? <laughs> I hope not. I just have a different perspective than you do. I can see things in a way you can't yet. Oh, yeah? Like what? Well, okay, you have a safe hidden in your pantry. <laughs> and inside it, you have 12 coins, a will, and a passport. How did you know that? What are you? Are you a god? Well... No more than you. You see, since I am above you, <laughs> in the third dimension, I can see inside things in your world. Third dimension? You are a crazy ghost. There's only two. Look. <laughs> so, if I were to touch the inside of your stomach, how would I do that? Well, you'd have to cut through my skin. Otherwise, it's impossible. <laughs> Stop! Stop! No. <laughs> Ready for more? More what? Dimensions. Oh. Directions. Uh, no. Yes, but... Oh. But there aren't any. More? 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 What will happen to me? What will I become? You'd have to become it, to know. Okay. Excellent. Oh. I never knew. Isn't it funny? Okay. Yes. So, what did you conclude? What did you conclude? Yes, it is a great video. When you don't know, fear, yes. You understand he didn't have the symbol to tell him the word A, above. Are you with me? There is so much more than we can see, yes. The limiting factor was the symbols. He couldn't communicate the symbol. Are you with me? We are seeing very small amount, yes. The more you think, the more you think that mm, I have a full picture, the worse you are. There's so much more we can see. So why we are limiting ourselves based on what we can see? We're limiting ourselves because we've been educated for something and I'm going to, to, to show it within the next few slides, what actually is happening. But the first thing you need to understand is what limits you right now is symbols.
I don't have a way to tell you or to some of you, I, uh, you'll see that as you progress with me, you understand more and more. How many of you have been with me for a while and your, your viewpoint changed billion percent at least? How many of you change, like your viewpoint, like totally, I never thought that it's like that, yes? True. For new people, we have the problem of getting you to see the first time the word above. The word above, just the one word, the definition of the word, just the, the fact that you need to understand that symbols, the ability to define the word and later on to become all knowing about what's this word, which means you don't define the word, you know it. Once you are out, once you are above, you don't define the word, you know the symbol, you understand? You use the symbol, you don't understand the symbol. So the first step in progressing is realizing that what's limiting you is only symbols. Because even if I know in everything in the universe, I come to, um, to an Aborigine 200 years ago, and I know everything about electronics, and I'm going to tell him about the semiconductors. He doesn't know what I'm talking about. Or atoms. Or cell phones, never mind, there's so, such a small piece, you understand? That is where you are when you start learning with me. The symbol is the limiting factor. And you know that I'm using different language and I use very specific language because you have to separate the symbol to a very, very, very defined word so you can on a gradient scale realize hold on there is something to know and you'll see that one day you'll just know every one person every single person that been with me for any length of time realize over time number one there's something to know and number two once they realize that they have to understand the symbol and then they understand 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 and one day boom they know are you with me so today you're doing the first step the first step for 100 million years you've been stupidified by not defining symbols today if you actually participate if you actually insist of of understanding what i'm saying you will see that at one point you will all of a sudden know it's like you're trying to play guitar you're trying to play guitar you're trying to play you're trying you're trying you're trying and one day you just know you you just can hold this note and you you can just hold this chord one day it sounds good you just know symbols are always substitute for knowingness and are the limiting factor in human understanding that's what limits you you don't have the a word above what does it mean above i don't know there's no such a word what does it mean above what does it mean responsibility if you have not been with me i promise you you cannot define the word responsibility you can try but it will not how do i know that it will you don't it will not work because the next day you still blame someone so you're not actually understanding it okay the portrait of the one knows the definition of symbols as he created them so the one knows the definition of symbols not because i told him not because he remember but because he created them are you with me this is where we're going with that seminar in uh, canada this is what i'm leading towards the traits of the one the first concept you must gain is the ability to conceive. The word conceive may mean take in, capture, imagine, to form an idea or concept of something. So the first concept you must gain is the ability to conceive the concept of nothingness. The concept of nothingness. What does it mean nothingness? How will you define nothingness? What does it mean nothing? before the beginning, no, no, no physical, not something, not this universe, before something doesn't exist and is not time bound. 
something that isn't composed of two, what is not something, does not contain two parts, very good, no physical definition, defining, no physical defining qualities, before the beginning of the physical universe, absence of something, nothing that can create something doesn't exist, the absence of spiritual. Okay, let me give you a little bit of different viewpoint for all of you, even if you've been with me for a while. It is so simplified that it will blow your mind. What is something? Something is some thing. Some mean, uh, some come from old English, some of you. Ultimately from an Indo-European word meaning together with. So something is some and thing. More than one thing, something is more than one thing. Are you with me? The word something means more than one thing. Anything that is composed of two, is something. Now what is nothingness? Ness, by the way, means a state of condition. If I tell you lovingness is the state of love, okay? So what is somethingness? Not a thing. No things. Not a thing. Nothingness is just not a thing, not physical. Are you with me? It's really right there in the world. It's not composed of two. It, before two comes one. Before two comes one. That nothing means before two. Are you with me? So if I'm looking, if I'm looking, if I'm looking at uh, this is the beginning, and this is really important, especially for new people. This is the beginning, and this is time. The word beginning mean was not here before. Everyone with me on that definition? The word beginning was mean was not here before. If I say the beginning of my relationship, it means my relationship was not here before. The beginning of iPhone, which means iPhone was not here before. Okay. Now you will see that uh, if we saying that this is time and this is the beginning, and if we say that uh, here is the physical universe, okay, if you will check. Something is more than one, it's two. More than one is two. The physical universe is composed of tools. So far, so good? Everyone agree with that? I need you to really look if it makes sense to you. There is no plus without minus. There is no big without small. There is no beautiful without ugliness. There is no pain without marriage. There is always plus and minus, yes? Exactly. So the so the physical universe is composed of two. So there's two, there's not three, there's four. It's always composed of two. There's no five, there's six or eight or sixteen or thirty-two, etc. Are you with me? Now, if the physical universe is composed of two, it means that the First thing was two. The first particle was two. True or false? So we can say that something, something, some thing is anything that composed of twos. Do you agree with this definition? Something is anything that composed of two. which means that what created the something cannot be composed of two. What come before two is one. So if something is anything that composed of two, nothing, not a thing, is just not composed of two. So what created two must be not composed of two. It may compose of 70, 77, we call it the one. Because before the iPhone, there was no iPhone. iPhone did not create the iPhone. The current relationship that I have with the, uh, my hand was not created by this relationship because it started at one point. Are you with me? Everyone with me? Do you have this concept? This is a very strange concept for this universe. People 
uh, said that uh, God brought something out of nothing, but they never really understand it. They only parrot it because they didn't have the symbols to explain it. The genius is to get this concept and to get you to make it your own, not to understand it. But it needs to come to be like, ah, of course it's like that. I know. I invented it. I, I mean you, yes? So before it becomes your own, before it becomes the most simple, most obvious thing for you, like your name, it is not true. It's just, it's just a lie. For as long as I'm telling you that, you're dealing with lies, the moment that it becomes yours, it's true. Because if I told you and you're repeating it, you're a parrot. You're not all-knowing, you understand? A common trend in spiritual uh, community is the, that one is one with the universe, meaning that there are so there are no individual and identity with nothingness other separate of the, so the common belief is bullshit why because uh, if you ask those same people what does it mean spiritual they will tell you that it's some kind of an energy so they just don't have the definition bill so that you cannot explain illogic logical <laughs> understand one with the universe okay one with is already do not make sense because one is not a thing nothing cannot be with can you have nothing with someone do you understand the illogic just by listening to what they say you understand the level of um, lack of genius <laughs> are you with me Okay, so, so the fifth trait of the one, the one created by postulates alone. What does it mean created by postulates alone? You bring something out of nothing. You just say it is and it is. You don't go and check it, you're nothing. As we'll go along, you will un you learn more. But you will see that a creation must be something out of nothing. Because the physical universe is composed of two. What brought the two about? If it is some kind of an accidental explosion, the Big Bang, who did you bang to bring the first uh, bangi? <laughs> Are you with me? Do you understand? It's like total nonsense. You cannot break a no glass. You first need to have a glass and then you can break it. You cannot explode something that do not exist. Okay, so this is the fifth, fifth trait. Thank you, Marcel. The fifth trait of uh, the one is it creates by postulate alone. Now, only nothing, only the one can create, bring about something out of nothing. For as long as you are messing up with symbols, for as long as you do not know how to create something out of nothing, you're just a slave. Uh, the slide, which slide, uh, David? I'm not sure which slide. This one? Okay, so for as long as you don't know how to create, for as long as if I'm asking you, tell me, uh, define for me, please, the word love, and you don't just know it, not parroting, not remembering a definition, but knowing, making it up in a totally new unit of time. You are not actually, you, you, you are not the one, you're just a slave. So only nothing, only the one can create, bring about something out of nothing. The matrix talked about the one. While the prophets of ancient Israel were the first to teach monotheism, which means one God, most modern religion promote one God. And even at times where people believed in multiple gods, each God was postulated as an extension of one God. And so the sixth trait of the one, he knows he is the one. He doesn't need confirmation. 
If you need the plot from someone else other than you, you are not the one. If the best applaud is not your applaud, you are not there yet. Thank you, Marcel. Yes. The physical universe, however, is composed of tools. The physical universe is a universe of change. For something to exist in the physical universe, it must first be compared to something. In the physical universe, existence is the result of two. Nothing exists alone. You cannot say big in the physical universe. For big in the physical universe, you need small or bigger. Nothing stay alone. Are you with me? The physical universe is composed of two. The spiritual universe is composed of nothing. Nothing means not two. Nothing just means not composed of two. And hence, the smaller number in the physical universe is two. If you get that, if you get that in the physical universe, for anything to exist, you can, this do not exist. It has to be existing in comparison to something. When I do that, you immediately go into your mind and compare all the things you similar to that. And you say, oh, one guy will say this is a drawing. Another guy will say this is a snake. And another guy would say it's a piece of hair. It depends what you compare it to in your mind. Otherwise, it is nothing. If you don't have something to compare it to, it's nothing. If it is less than two, it is nothing. You don't even see it. If you have nothing to compare it to, you will not see it. Are you with me? You will not see it if there is nothing to compare it to, because it's not physical. For something to become physical, for something to be measurable, sense, uh, it needs to be compared to something else. You cannot find even one thing that was created from the physical universe. In the physical universe, there's no such thing as creation. There's not even one thing that was created from something. Because if I create something, let's say I create a wall, if people say, well, you know, but I created the painting. Well, who gave you the canvas? Who gave you the paint? It was there. There is something before us. Nothing was created. There was change in the physical universe. There is change. There is no creation. The physical universe is the result of creation. There is no creativity within the physical universe. I wrote a song. Who, who gave you the words? Who taught you the chords? Are you with me? You're changing. You're not creating. Yes? Not thing, the one, not thing. I'm saying that the spirit is not thing. This is what the spirit is. Not thing, the one, is all powerful, unchangeable, unconditional, and immortal. Nothing cannot die. Are you with me? You cannot break nothing. Tools are constant change. The physical universe is constant change. It's conditional. It is big for as long as I, the other one is small. It is small for as long as the other one is big. So tools are constant change, conditional, and hence mortal. After all, every second is the death of the earlier second. And hence it is weak. What about having children? Is that children come from the, from the air? You have a, an egg and a sperm. Who gave you the egg and the sperm? Is that creation? No. It's just mixing of two chemicals. And you get a new body. If you just brought the sperm out of nothing, for sure. But I don't know about the, your husband, my husband, <laughs> not that I have a husband, yes. <laughs> but the husband that I know, they're not as uh, talented. Real life example of compare of compen of what and of comparison. Ah, yes, uh, I'm strong in relationship to how much weight I pick up. 
uh, I'm uh, more beautiful or more ugly. I'm something in comparison to something. <laughs> yeah, he agrees. I thought I'm the only uh, untalented man. <laughs> For women, all men are untalented. <laughs> Yes. So to a constant change, do you, do you understand that the physical universe is constant change and that's why it's dying because every second you have the death of the earlier second. That's why it's mortal. Are you with me? The seventh uh, trait of the one is, is the one is not mortal. If you worried about dying, you're not the one yet. For as long as you're worried about dying, you cannot win and lose with the same level of enthusiasm. You're just a slave. Because someone can kill you. Someone can arrest you. Yes? For a person, for a person how it applies, certainty is powerful, unchangeable, unconditional, immortal, while doubt is constant change, conditional, mortal, and hence weak. So when we talk about people, the difference is between certainty and uncertainty. Okay, I'm back. Can you hear me now? Yes, excellent. Okay, good. So before you have learned how to become the one, you will be subject to the torture, which most people laughingly called life. The reason you are in this jail is because you cannot bring something out of nothing. You are always being defined by the other side. You cannot define anything. You have a symbol that someone defined what it is and you are subject to that definition. Are you with me? You're always an effect in the physical universe and before you become you, you're just a slave. Just a slave. It's really unbelievable. Just a slave. Nothing more, nothing less. And hence, the only subject worth knowing is the subject of the nothing that creates the something. Yet you take any person and he will invest in walls, he will invest in cars, uh, he will work hard, he will do anything only in order to get closer and closer and closer to his death. Where actually, if you become the one, yes, your body will die for sure, but not you. You will have the certainty that whatever happened, you are not going to be the effect of the torture that waits for you in the implant stations, the, in the in-between lives. You will not, you will not be the effect. You will become you. So the only thing worth knowing, more important than money, more important than time, more important than anything, is the nothing that creates the something. Because what limits what do you have, which you are so much after, is your own condition. Your own spiritual condition define what you have. Nothing more. And when your spiritual condition deteriorate, what you have is a broken, ugly, problematic things. And when your spiritual condition improve, you have beautiful, unbelievable, loving relationships. And don't think that relationships is not something you have. Your spiritual condition is showing first and foremost by your relationships. And you will see that when your spiritual condition deteriorate, the first thing that deteriorate is the relationship with other beings and then everything else. You will be able to hold for a long time beautiful walls. But beautiful walls are not a good substitute for love. Are you with me? 
everyone with me? Now, what is the only thing ever wrong with anyone? What is the only thing ever wrong with anyone? What do you think is the only thing? There's one thing that if this is handled, everything else follow. How do you take out, how do you get out of this two dimensional universe? Willingness, yes. It is me, yes. Mm -hmm. What is the only thing that's ever wrong? If you actually handle that, everything is fixed. They don't understand that perfect. That's true. He thinks it's something, yes. How do you summarize all of that? What is the only thing, only thing? A tech step to observe more, yes. Blame, clearing the words, yes. Responsibility, yes. The past, excellent. They're not the one, that's very true. I want, let, let's, let's have a look, okay? I want you to think about the time something went wrong with you your plans or your results. Just think about the time, just one time. Something did not work exactly as you wanted. Just one time, just do the, the drill. Just one time. But it has to be something specific, not generality, yes? Okay. Of course, you need to write in the chat that you got it, so I know we can, yes? Okay, good. Now, excellent. Now. Why did it happen? Why did it happen? Why did it happen? This one thing, why did it happen? I didn't see the full picture. I was missing data, bad communication because I stopped communicating, not clear define, re-stimulated. I didn't took responsibility, no understanding. I didn't take responsibility. Why did it happen? Because it wasn't mine. Mm -hmm. it, uh, I was working with past situation to fix and it is for the better. Okay. Why you can not change the past? We, I will come back with the, to this question that I ask you, yes? Why you cannot change the past? Because what you're telling me, something happened, and now you're telling me why you couldn't change the past, yes? You see, you, you had a situation, and you're telling me, look, it's happened for the better, for the worse, da, 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 but you cannot change the past, it's happened. Why you cannot change the past? Why a person cannot change the past? What prevent, you know that physically there's no limitation on going backward and forward. No one, there is nothing in physics that limits time from going backward. There's no past. We created the unit of time, okay. You believe you can't, yes, there is no past, okay. But why you cannot go back and create? Why there's no past? Does not exist. Okay, so let's say that there's no past. Let's say there's no past or it does not exist, but whatever the answer you give, will your answers fix the situation? And you tell me, but there's no situation. I ask you to tell me about something that went wrong. So it's obviously there is a situation. Are you with me? Obviously there's a situation. Even if you justify it and you say, no, it's actually, for the best of everyone and blah, blah, but there is a situation because you thought when I asked you about something went wrong, you gave me that thing. So obviously you're carrying it with you. It's extremely justified, but it's a situation. Are you with me? So exactly. So if you gave me a reason and the situation has not been fixed, if you it didn't fix the situation, the answer you gave me is not the actual reason. Do you get the idea? If the reason why the car do not start, do not fix the car, never mind why, it's not the reason. Are you with me? If you say there is no fuel, but I cannot go and get fuel. So the problem is not no fuel. The problem is I cannot go and get fuel. So you have the wrong reason. That's why you cannot fix it. 
But if you know it's you that cannot get fuel, well, we can do something about it. Let's start walking. Maybe in two lifetimes, we will come back to the car and give, get the fuel, but we will get the fuel if we have the real why. Are you with me? So what is the only thing ever wrong with anyone? Or in other words, what do you need so nothing can ever go wrong with you? So you can fix anything. Lack of willingness, yes, but why? So what do you need? The reason anything ever went wrong for you is what you must discover if you're going to create a life worth living. Otherwise, look at every old person, look at your parents, and you will see that they mainly, mainly, if you actually talk to them, if you actually go in, they didn't live life worth living. When they say it's too short, it means that it's not because they don't know how to do it. When they say it's too short, life is too short, what they actually mean is we didn't really live life like it should have been. Because if you had the full life, one second is enough. Are you with me? When someone said life was too short or life is too short, it means that he's not living his life to the fullest. Are you with me? This is really amazing. Otherwise, you are not living. You are afraid. You are trying not to die. So the only thing ever wrong with anyone is the unwillingness to be source, to be the one. You are not willing to be the source of everything. You're not willing to be the nothing that bring about something. You always have a reason. Reason, reason, if this is the beginning and this time, and this is the first thing, second, third, fourth, da, 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 da. Reason is... Okay, we're back again. There's some kind of a problem with this interface. Okay, so reason, reason is this is happen and this is, next thing, this happen and this thing, this happen, etc. So this is present time. And when you say that you have a reason for why something happened, it means that I'm useless. Because when you are you, you don't look for reason, you're causing the reason, you bring something out of reason. You, you do something for no reason at all. You say it is and it is. God did not say, well, you know, I'm going to build the, the planet, so I'm going to take uh, all the atoms and arrange them in a certain way, and then there will... No, he just said, let it be light, and here it is light. That's the ideal. The ideal is not to work for 50 years. Are you with me? Make sense? So the only problem is that you are unwilling to be the source. And you say, no, no, but I'm willing. You are not. How do I know that you are not? You give me reasons. For as long as you have a reason, you are not the source. Love is the urge to share the same space for no reason at all. The moment that there is reason, it's not love, it's a business deal. A mother don't say, well, you know, I love my child because he, he has a blue eyes. And if by mistake he will lose, lose an eye, I will not love him anymore. No. There's no reason. She love him, full stop. Okay, David. Okay. So what is source? What is source? What does the word source mean? You're welcome. What does the word source mean? What is source? When I say you need to be source, what does it mean source? 
How will you define the word source? A creator, very good. To bring something out of nothing, exactly. I did it, origination point, to be the creator. Exactly, you got it. Source is the place where something begins. The thing from which something is derived. The initiation of creation. So if you are source, there is no prior cause. Source don't need uh, atoms to build walls. Source just say, let it be light and there is light. You'll see that the greatness of your problems, the more, the bigger the problems are, the smallness of your influence in any situation. Uh, and you'll see that uh, the situ in proportion to your unwillingness to admit being source. So the greatest of your problems and the smallest of your influence in any situation is proportional to your unwillingness to admit being the source, being the one. It's just a matter of admitting. You don't need to do a damn thing. You just need to know it. And because it is so simple, you complicate it. Because you've been trained to find prior cause. You've been trained to find prior cause. But you see that when you know something, when you know how to play guitar, there is no prior cause. You simply know. You, you just know. The eighth rate of the one is the ability and willingness to be source and cause of a nothing and everything. That's the eighth rate. Now, what will happen for as long as you are not source over your income? What will happen if you are not source over the income? You say, this is the target for the week and it happens. No income, yes. You'll be the effect of your income, yes. Anything you are not the source of, you get the opposite. Are you with me? So instead of income, you had debt. What will be, what will happen if for as long as you are not source of, over your health? If you're not source over your health, you'll become sick. If you're not source over your relationship, you will have a broken relationship. How would anyone become source while trapped in a body? How can anyone become source while you are trapped in a body? Are you with me? Do you understand the problem? How can you become source when you are in, totally in a two-dimensional universe and you don't even have an idea that, it, that the third dimension exists? This is the reason I created the one. This is the reason I created the one. This is the reason that seminar is so important. Are you with me? The first up step out of any trap is getting understanding of the mechanics of the trap. The first thing to understand is that the trap is only a game. Any trap, any problem you ever had, if you just understand that nothing is serious, nothing is important, nothing Nothing is really important. If you really, 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 really understand it, and there was billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of people that came again and again and again and told us, and they told themselves that life is really, really serious, and they die with not a dent. Nothing really is important. Are you with me? Nothing is important. The, a trap is only a game. A trap is only a game. The ninth trait of uh, the one is life is just a fun game. If for as long as you don't know that life is just a game, life is a game, what happens is you are not living, you are dying. Life is a game, a deadly game, but a game. Children love to play games. Adult love it less. True or false? Yes. You start to die, life becomes difficult to live the moment you stop playing. 
the moment that your relationship with your um, wife, the girlfriend, the husband is not just a game. It's just a beauty. It's just a game. I just want to impress her. It's a game. Are you with me? I just want to to make her laugh. It's a game. The moment that it's not just a nice game and it's become serious, will she accept me? Is she right? Am I right? <laughs> you don't have a relationship anymore. You don't have a relationship anymore. You start to die. The relationships start to die. Life becomes difficult to live the moment you stop playing. It is observable that you first stop playing and then life becomes difficult. Never the other way around. It's not that life becomes difficult and that's why you stop playing. Someone convinced you that life is difficult. Are you with me? Now, spot the time you decided that life is not a game. I want you to spot the exact moment that you decided that life is not a game. Every person have that moment in time that he decided, oh, it's dangerous. Oh, one second, this is serious. Life is serious. You ought to be careful. Yes, Ashley, good. Yes. Now, if you spot the, the time, the moment that you spot it, yes, what was the result? What was the result? How is your life since? More difficult? Less? Worse? Amazing, yes? Little amount of creation. That's exactly, Regan. Spot on. Exactly. Exactly. So if you simply decide that you're going to play, and play do not mean being irresponsible. Play do not mean being irresponsible. It's something else you'll see within a second. The question is, of course, if games are fun, if life is fun, and all you have to do is play, why would anyone stop playing? Why would anyone wish to die? Something do not make sense, do you understand? Something makes zero sense. If all you have to do is stay a kid, you just need to play. It's, it's fun. Why? Why? If, if games are fun, life is fun, and all you have to do is play, why would anyone stop playing? Why would you choose? Why would you, anyone wish to die? Here it is. Games are played since they're fun. If it is not fun, it is not a game. Okay? If it is not fun, it is not a game. Now, for a game to be a game, you need at least, for a game to be a game, you need at least players. You need one or more opponents. If there's no opponents, it's not a game. You need actions and reactions. You must have barriers to overcome. If there's no other side, <laughs> you're playing basketball with yourself. It's not a game, yes? You need to have the other side, something to overcome. You must have goals to reach. And of course, of course, some, of course, something to win. This is what you need to have a game. If any of those things is missing, you don't have a game. Are you with me? So far, so good? Excellent. Now, spirits love games, yet games have a major, major, major liability for the spirit. Major liability. Any idea what is the major liability of games? What's the problems with games? What is the liability of games? What, why, what's the problem? Let's just play. Fear of losing, exactly, Regan. You can become serious, not knowing the rules. You can lose, exactly. The problem is, the problem is, 
The problem is gains have winners and losers. And after the spirit, after a spirit lost a game, it believed that it lost some of its capabilities. The liability of a game is that you can lose. You consider that you can lose. Are you with me? This is the liability of the game. This is what spirit thinks. And you're going to discover something amazing today. The 10th trait of the one is willingness to win and lose with the same level of enthusiasm. This thing that um, I'm teaching you for a while, for a long time, for a few years, is probably one of the most, 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 most important thing to understand, yet the most, it's, it's very easy to understand and to accept, not as much to apply. Yet, it takes years before one pretends that one stops playing. So you see, you're a kid, and it takes years, and uh, sometimes eons, you're right, Regan, you, it takes years and sometimes eons to really stop playing. But I want you to have a look. Did you actually ever stop playing? Or was every loss you ever had just another game? that you didn't admit. So you got sick and it's just another game. And you had the problem with your wife, it's just another game. A lower level game, but a game. So you had an accident and you can prove to everyone, look, it happened by mistake, but it's just another game. Every unfortunate thing that ever happened to you was just another game, just lower level game. As you deteriorate on your tone, as you become more and more and more serious, you pick up more and more serious gains. And serious gains have bad, uh, bad uh, results. And upton games, unserious game, inevitably have amazing result. Every please turn off the camera. Gali, turn off the cameras there. Okay. Are you with me? Yes, it's amazing. It's really, really, really unbelievable. Even not playing. Even not playing is just another, another lower game. You say that, thank you, Marcel. You say that uh, to someone, oh, you know what? I don't want to talk to you, which means I don't want to play with you. It's just another lower game because the situation is not stopped. It, you, the game is not stopped. It's still in your mind. This thing you're carrying with you, and I can show you that I can get you to recall a break in communication that happened 2,000 years ago. And you'll have all the data to the last minute detail. Not a problem, Avery. So to live, you must play the game of life. But since you consider you can lose, you play the game of stop playing. And the result of that game is you only lose by trying not to lose. You understand? You're trying not to lose. And that's what caused you to lose. Because if you stop playing, if you deteriorate on the level of, uh, of games, every time you stop playing, you will go down on the tone scale. You'll be more serious. You will still play, but a more serious game with more deadly results to you. You know that uh, as you go down, you go down, you go down, you die. What you, what you do when you die, you just convince everyone that you die. You convince everyone, look, I'm not in the game, I left. Are you with me? And when they try to resuscitate you, it's only because you are not convincing enough. Are you with me? Everything you do is just a game. And so you have to be born as someone else, no memories. Otherwise, you are not convincing. You see, you die and you come back, you pick up a new body, and now you have to be convincing. And you say, I don't know how to read. 
I don't know how to speak. But some people born and they just know how to play piano. Some people born and they just know English and they live in an Arab city. And some people are born and they know electronics. And some people are born and they really trying to be convinced that they're still dead. Are you with me? You're just trying to convince that you are dead because you want to live the game. When you don't know how to play the game, when you become serious, you try to live the game and you have two options to live the game. One is to die and the second one is to go insane. Anytime you see people that have anxiety, that have extreme fears, that have panic attack, that have any kind of mental problems, they're just trying to live the game on the route of insanity instead of the route of dying. Are you with me? It's just an effort to, to live the game. They become too serious. The game become too serious. They just need to learn how to become the one, to become higher on the tone scale. And all of a sudden, it will be funny. You'll take any one of our uh, students here that have been with me for a while, and you will see that they used to have oh, anxiety and this and that. And as they learned and learned and learned and learned, it never happened. It's just, what do you mean? What's anxiety? I cause anxiety to other people. No one causes anxiety to me. <laughs> Are you with me? <laughs> what am I, useless? <laughs> Even in the hardest time, I, I stay calm. That's very true, Ashley. Yes? Before you restore your ability to play, you're not living. Yes? But how? How do you learn how to play for real? How do you learn how to play for real? How do you become the one again after you deteriorated for so many lifetimes? You must learn how to restore your native ability. You must learn how to become the one. You must learn, otherwise you will deteriorate. It didn't happen this week, it will happen next week or next year. It will start with your husband or it will start with your girlfriend or with your car or with your relationship or with your business and it will hit you. Because if you observe, if you open your eyes, you see it happen to, all, to anyone. Here is the first thing you will have to confront. It will not be easy, but it is vital. This is something I'm going to tell you that you will not agree with, especially not at the beginning. But you will see that it's actually true. You will see. Here it is. There is nothing wrong with losing. Have a look at that. There is nothing wrong with losing. I know that it's the opposite of what everyone tells you. Your first instinct will be, but this is nonsense. I must win. Loss is a small or big step towards death. That will be the first thing that will come into your mind. Mm -mm. But let's have a look. People get educated into believing that winning is good and losing is bad. Did you ever see a baby worries as to if he won or lost a peekaboo game? No, of course not, yes. They're too alive to worry about winning and losing. They enjoy the life, the, the play, they, they enjoy the game. Michael Jordan play for the love of the game, not for the winning. Otherwise, he lost so many times. How will he win? People get educated into believing that winning is good and losing is bad, yet it is just a belief, a consideration, a method to convince you the undefeatable, to admit the fit. Only when you agree that losing is bad will you be able to be defeated? Only if you agree that losing is bad, will you be able to be defeated? 
Yes, Harold. Amazing. Are you with me? You have to agree that something is bad to be defeated. It's really amazing. It is crazy and unbelievable and freeing and it is the trap. I'm giving you the mechanics of the trap. A very small part of the mechanics of the trap, but a very important one. What is the only real road to success? To success? People say, well, you know, to succeed, you need to fail. I said that there is nothing wrong with failure, but I didn't say that the road to success is to fail. What I say, it is the, exactly the opposite. Any successful person that ever lived to be successful had an unshakable certainty that they never lost. As otherwise, they would stop playing the game. So people have some inkling and they say, well, you win, you succeed because you failed. No, 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 no. You succeed because you did not consider what other people call failure a failure. Are you with me? This is the key. But you buying the opinion of society. And so every time you say, oh, I failed, what do you do? What does it mean failed? It means let's limit ourselves. We are not as good. Let's become smaller and weaker and less dangerous. This is what society asks you to do. Good, Patrick. Nothing could prove them they lost. Not even for a second. Those people that are successful, nothing. They, they just like Teflon, nothing affect them. Nothing can stick to them. No loss can stick to them. I told you about my story with BP when I started this $100 million deal. And they will come and say, this is a problem, problem, problem. And I said, no problem. And they said, da, 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 this is a disaster. And I said, no problem. And I said, da, 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 and I said, no problem. I never admitted success. For me, it was like nothing. It's not a problem, not a problem, not a problem. It's not, a, it's not, I cannot fail. It's nothing. It's the fa failure was not, it's not, not an option. It's not that failure was not an option. There was no such thing as failure. Are you with me? There is no such thing as failure. But to be able to do it, one be very close to native state. One must become the one. Otherwise, you will deteriorate. Regardless of who you are, you will deteriorate. Here are a few powerful examples. I'm going to give you some amazing examples that will blow your mind. George Washington was in a very good condition spiritually, the one. He hardly had an army. He had no navy. He did not have the support of the people. Yet, he fought one of the strongest armies on earth at the time for eight years. One of the strongest, the, the, the English empire. He fought the empire. Do you understand? If you really get that, it, it just, it just, it's just a mission impossible. It's too possible next to that, yes? Mission Impossible is only two hours of a movie, yes? It happens within two hours. This is eight years. He lost 11 out of the 17 battles he fought. And those he supposedly won, the six, other than one, which is the siege of York, uh, Yorktown in September uh, 17, uh, 1781, was promoted as one, but actually was lost. So he basically lost every single battle he had. Yet, he won the war and got Great Britain to surrender to the American forces by continuing to lose, but never considering he lost. He never considered he lost. Are you with me? Take every celebrity and you will see that if he became successful, he never considered he lost. The 11th trait of the one is the ability to continue on a given course. 
You start the webinar. Are you continuing or you are falling asleep? Are you with me? The 11th rate. The Israeli independent war was the same. Seven countries, 250 million people against 600,000 people with no weapon, just after the Holocaust, broken people, won 20, 250 million people against 600,000. Why? Every loss was not a loss. The current war of Israel against the Hamas and Hezbollah, they, Hamas and Hezbollah, keep losing. No one can conceive them, can convince them that they do, uh, that what they do is disgraceful. No one can convince them they lost. And so they will eventually win. By losing, but not actually considering it a loss, they will win. Israel go and bomb whatever, kill all the leaders, and, and, and they come up and they say, we won. He died as a mortarate. He is, he is, do you understand? Every loss they have for them is a one, is they win. Higher tone. They have a stronger purpose. The game is more, is stronger than the game of the Jewish people. The game of the Israelis after the Holocaust was they had a very high purpose, so they, they couldn't lose. Today, the Israelis don't have a strong purpose. 7 of October gave them some kind of a purpose, but still, it's nothing. Are you with me? I'll give you another example. This person lost his uh, job in 1832. He failed in business in 1833. He suffered a nervous breakdown in 1836. He was defeated in his run for Congress in 1843. He lost the Senate race in 1855 and for good measure also on 1858. Who was that person? Exactly, Bill. Abraham Lincoln. Elected as the 16th president of the United States in 1860 and led the country through the civil war and ultimately abolishing slavery. He lost and lost and lost and lost and lost. And why did he continue? Because he didn't consider it a loss. Are you with me? His teacher said he was too stupid to learn anything. He was fired from his first two jobs for being non-productive. He made thousand unsuccessful attempts to invent something. Who was that person? Exactly, Marcel. Exactly. Thomas Edison invented the successful practical light bulb and held over 1,000 patents. Faced rejection from 12 publishers for her first book was a single mother living on welfare at the time. Who was that person? Exactly, Lisa. Harry Potter, yes. J.K. Rowling, yes. Became one of the best-selling author of all times with the Harry Potter series, which has sold over 500 million copies worldwide. Do you think that she thought that she failed after each one of those people rejected her while she was on welfare? No. His chicken recipe, uh, recipe was uh, rejected 1,009 times before a restaurant accepted it. Who was it? Exactly. Exactly the colonel. Colonel. Helen de Sanders, founder of Kentucky Fried Chicken, which became one of the largest fast food chains in the world. He was ousted from the company he founded in 85. They threw him out, they fired him. Who was that person? 
Steve Jobs, exactly. He returned to Apple in 1997 and led it to become one of the most valuable companies in the world with revolutionary products like the iPod, iPhone, and iPad. He never considered he lost. Was demoted from her job as a news anchor because she wasn't fit for television. Who was that person? Exactly, Oprah. Oprah Winfrey became a, a highest successful talk show host, media executive, actress, and philanthropist with her show, The Oprah Winfrey Show, becoming the highest rated TV program of its kind in history. Was fired from a newspaper for lacking imagination and having no original idea. Faced bankruptcy multiple times. Who was that person? Exactly, David. Yes, Lorna. Walt Disney. Created Disney, one of the most successful and influential entertainment companies in the world. And beloved character like Mickey Mouse. The 12th trait of the one is cause of a life. For them, for them, it's not that failure is not an option. There is no such thing as failure. It's not that it's not an option. It's not that it's sitting there and they're choosing to have it as an option. It is nothing like that. Like if I'm telling you, be that, did they do it? There's nothing like that, yes? All of those people had one thing in common. They learned the secret, ancient know-how of how to become the one. There's an actual know-how. They learned and applied. And as a result, they operated above the laws of the physical universe. They become the one. They become the one. You can learn it. Before you learn how to restore your native abilities, before you learn how to become the one, anything you do will be in the direction of deterioration. Anything you do. And the good news is you can learn it. It is not easy, but it is possible. What I suggest you do, you register for the one, you attend the seminar, and you will see you too become the one. Okay. Register. You have a one chance. It will change the course of history for you. Don't miss it. Don't find useless thing in the physical universe to tell you that you has to stay, that you have to stay in the trap. Open the door. After all, you lock it from the inside. Thank you very much, Gali. Thank you for helping me with the English and for and being the administrator. It is 4 a.m. for you in South Africa and you're helping. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone for participating. Be in the one. You will see. It will be the best thing that ever happened to you. It won't be easy, promise you. Won't be easy. You will curse the whole way. But you will end up playing a much higher tone game. I love you. Thank you. And I will see you. Um, what is our ah, the business class? Business class on Friday. Bye.